sermon on the Ten Commandments prompted our next guest to dig deeper into her own relationship with God, and she has written a book all about her spiritual journey. It is called Lighthouse Faith, God as a Living Reality in a World Immersed in Fog. What a true title. <laughs> Joining us now, author and Fox News religion correspondent Lauren Green. Hey, Lauren. Hey, thanks, Ainsley. Nice to see you. Congratulations on this. Thank you so much. This has been about a decade in the making. I know. <laughs> Tell me about the title. How did you come up with the title? Well, the title is based on the sermon about the Ten Commandments, and it was basically looking at the structure of the Ten Commandments, that you couldn't violate Commandments 2 through 10 without first violating 1, and it occurred to me that that would be like the beacon of a lighthouse on top of the other commandments. The idea is that, you know, the structure of the Ten Commandments creates the impact that all the, relate, all the uh, laws relate mm -hmm. first to the first commandment and second by it, the other commandments, and it seemed to me that this was not just a template for our moral spiritual law, but a, te but a template for all law, both physical and spiritual. And I know you met with a lot of scientists, right? So it's science combined with biblical stories, theology. So that d does it help people who might have doubts about their faith or are very smart and maybe have questions for their pastors and their pastors aren't able to, to well, answer Well, exactly, exactly. One of the things that draws uh, young people away from the church is because they can't answer questions about science. You know, did the world exist in, uh, you know, 13 billion years, as scientists say, or the six days in creation? What I say in this book, is that, wait a second, don't get bogged down in the time frame. What Hugh Ross, Dr. Hugh Ross at Reasons to Believe said is amazing is that he looked at all of the biblical or the, or the holy books, uh, creations of a, um, the, uh, creation accounts, and said the Bible was the only one that got the sequence right in terms of how science understands it. And that is in incredibly powerful because we get bogged down in little minor little details detail. that don't make a difference. Right. He's saying the sequence is right. And right. now let's look at what the Bible has and to say about it. We don't it. have to have all the answers. We just have to have the faith. Exactly. Now, you went through a lot in your life. You lost your brother to cancer, and you talk about that in the book. Tell us that story. Well, one of the things that really had a great impact on me is that, you know, my brother Kenny had, uh, was an artist, and he just loved painting. He, just, almost, he had to paint like he had to breathe. And towards the end of his life, as, he, as the cancer really consumed his body, he had this incredible journey and faith and a, a relationship with God. And he, and he told us that he would never trade more life for that relationship with God. That's how powerful it was. Right. And so that told me something about if God is a reality to you, it answers every question you have in the world. You talk about the fog, being bogged down by the fog, too, because you grew up in a Christian home, right? Your parents, y'all celebrated all of the, you were at church sure, all the absolutely. time every Sunday. But then you moved to New York City. Is that what you meant when you talked about the fog? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that one of the things that happens um, when you grow up or in the United States years ago, decades ago, is that, you know, we sort of live in the, um, you're sort of breathing the air of Christianity. We're not really bogged down by the doctrines, but we sort of breathe the air of it. And so when we're confronted with conflict about, you know, what our doctrines actually say, then we have these, you know, these foggy areas. And so what I was trying to do was get through that and decide that if there was an objective truth to which, you know, the Bible talks about, then it's true whether I believe it or not. You know, if there's a God, he exists whether I believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that even if you're an atheist, that's a belief about God. That at the end of the day, all of us have to take a leap of faith to actually say and, and, and put our fundamental trust in. That's true. Where can we buy your book? Uh, you can buy it on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble. I've actually saw a couple of copies in Barnes and Noble. But please buy it. But, you know, there's so much more about this. It is, it's really in depth, and that's one comment I've been getting is that it's very deep, mm -hmm. and it takes a little, you know effort to get through, but it really, really is quite interesting to bring science and faith back together. Wonderful. Lauren Green, thank you so much. Sure. Congratulations. Sure.